Benjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. I'm sorry I haven't posted any videos for a little while, but um, I was away on holiday and I was trying to catch up, but I've got some time now, so I thought I'd do a video. One of my friends um, uh, called Sean asked me to do a video on peripartum cardiomyopathy and uh, I'd been promising her that I was going to do this, so here it is, okay? Peripartum cardiomyopathy. This is a condition which is also otherwise known as pregnancy-associated cardiomyopathy. It is an uncommon condition which affects women of childbearing age either during pregnancy or immediately after pregnancy, and is characterized by the heart becoming weak and unable to pump adequate amounts of blood. This condition is called heart failure. So uh, pregnancy-induced cardiomyopathy is characterized by the development of heart muscle weakness either during the latter stages of pregnancy or immediately after delivery, okay? So to be diagnosed with this condition called peripartum cardiomyopathy, you need three criteria. Number one, uh, you have to. Uh, the, it is characterized by the development of heart failure towards the end of pregnancy or within the first five months after delivery. Number two, there has to be no other identifiable cause for the heart failure. So, you know, it has to be attributed to the pregnancy, not a heart attack or something else. So you have to look for an underlying cause. And if you don't find an underlying cause in a pregnant woman who develops heart failure, then that diagnosis of peripartum cardiomyopathy is made. Finally, when you do a heart scan and echocardiogram, the ejection fraction, which normally is around about 60%, should be less than 45%. Okay, so normal ejection fraction on an echocardiogram uh, in a pregnant woman would be about 60%. In someone who has peripartum cardiomyopathy or this pregnancy-induced cardiomyopathy on echo, the ejection fraction is less than 45%. Okay, so those are the three criteria which are required to make the diagnosis of um, peripartum cardiomyopathy. The next question is, how common is this condition? And the truth is that uh, it can affect women of any ethnicity whatsoever, but according to geography, it can vary in how common it is. So the commonest place it uh, occurs in is, uh, the, the place it occurs most commonly is Nigeria, in a place called Zaria in Nigeria, where one in a hundred live births uh, develop uh, one in a hundred uh, live births are characterized by the development of peripartum cardiomyopathy. In uh, somewhere like Japan, it can be one in 20,000. In the US, it's between one in a thousand to one in 4,000. So your geographical location has an implication on how frequent this is, uh, how frequently this is encountered. Okay, Very common in areas uh, which have a predominantly Afro-Caribbean uh, population like Nigeria, Haiti, uh, etc., uh, less common in places like Japan, significantly less common. Uh, these figures may not be completely accurate because not everyone who develops peripartum cardiomyopathy ne necessarily demonstrates much in the way of symptoms and therefore they don't go through the investigations to make that diagnosis. So maybe some of these figures are a little bit inaccurate. Uh, but th these are the quoted figures, very common in places like Nigeria and Haiti, um, uh, less common in places like Japan. Um, why does it occur? Why does peripartum cardiomyopathy affect some women? And the truth is we don't really know, okay? But there is no doubt that um, c certainly in places like Nigeria, it has been attributed to a local custom. So in uh, there's a Hausa, the Hausa tribe, there's a local custom that uh, women who've given birth have to uh, eat uh, a dry salt, a lake salt for 40 days after delivery. Uh, and this uh, increasing the amount of salt intake makes us retain more water. Because it makes us retain more water, there's more volume that the heart has to work with. This causes the heart potentially to um, deal with a lot more uh, and stretch, and that can cause the heart to weaken. So in Nigeria, this is why it has been attributed. But there are lots of other reasons, okay? So there no one um, explanation explains it in everyone. 
but there's no doubt that there may well be a genetic predisposition because not every woman who gets who becomes pregnant develops pregnancy induced cardiomyopathy so it can't just be about pregnancy it also probably has to have something to do with that person and maybe there's a genetic vulnerability which predisposes patients to uh, developing heart muscle weakness when they're uh, exposed to another stressor like pregnancy. Um, so uh, we know also that uh, it is far more common in women of African ancestry. It is more common in older women who are pregnant, so above the age of 35. Um, we know that people who have developed peripartum cardiomyopathy seem to have a clustering of other patients with cardiomyopathy in their families, maybe not pregnancy induced, but other forms of heart muscle weakness. So all these things point to a uh, potentially genetic vulnerability that a person may have inherited, which then predisposes them uh, to not coping so well, the, the heart not coping so well with the stress of pregnancy. We must remember that when we are pregnant, you know, the amount our heart has to do goes up significantly. The total body volume increases by 50% just by being pregnant. And therefore, the amount that the heart has to work against goes up. If you have a genetic vulnerability and the heart cannot cope with stress as easily, just that very, by very virtue of that volume increasing in the body could expose the heart to weaken. Uh, it's also true to note that this occurs more commonly in women who are multiple babies. So instead of one fetus, there are two or three. Uh, they're more likely, again, pointing to the fact that if you are carrying two fetuses, then the amount that the heart has to do is a lot more. The stress on the heart is greater. If you have a genetic pre vulnerability, then you're more likely to develop the heart muscle weakness. Uh, there is some uh, evidence to suggest that there may be a hormone called prolactin. Uh, prolactin is a hormone which enables um, women to produce milk in preparation for the uh, childbirth. Uh, and there is uh, some suggestion that uh, there is a problem with the processing of prolactin. And in some way, the prolactin... Um, can break down and form uh, other components which can harm the heart muscle and cause more stress in the heart muscle and that could be another mechanism and actually in animal models what they've done is when you um, reverse uh, prolactin release or when you counteract prolactin release with something called bromocryptine a prolactin inhibitor that seems to delay or reduce the likelihood of pregnancy induced cardiomyopathy but this bromocryptine is still you know it's still being studied so we don't we're not using it routinely uh, but it just points to that being another possible mechanism uh, by which uh, people develop this weakness of the heart muscle. What are the risk factors for the development of peripartum cardiomyopathy? Undoubtedly, one, African descent. Number two, a maternal age of greater than 30 to 35 years. Uh, number three, uh, a pregnancy with multiple fetuses. Uh, number four, a history of high blood pressure or eclampsia or preeclampsia, because that again puts more stress on the heart. And number five, maternal cocaine abuse. So if the mother has been using cocaine during the pregnancy, that can also expose to the risk of this peripartum cardiomyopathy. Uh, the next question is, how does it present? How do you know that you may have developed this? Okay, uh, And the answer is, uh, the symptoms can vary. So some people may not have any symptoms, in which case it may remain undiagnosed. Uh, but in other patients, um, common symptoms are worsening breathlessness, significantly worsening breathlessness on exercise, reduced exercise capacity, okay, swelling of the legs, inability to lie flat because of breathlessness, uh, having to wake up in the middle of the night and sit by your bed because you're getting so profoundly breathless, uh, blood clots forming, um, heart rhythm disturbances, persistent prolonged heart rhythm disturbances. What I don't mean is ectopic beats. What I mean is persistent heart rhythm disturbances like atrial fibrillation, etc. Those are all manifestations that it is worth looking at the heart to make sure that the heart hasn't weakened, uh, i.e. that you haven't developed this cardiomyopathy in the context of pregnancy. 
How is it diagnosed? Well, it's diagnosed by meaning by an ultrasound of the heart, an echocardiogram. So you do the echocardiogram. This allows you to assess the structure of the heart. If the heart function is less than 45%, you've made the diagnosis of a cardiomyopathy. All other tests largely are to exclude other causes of the cardiomyopathy because the diagnosis of peripartum cardiomyopathy is usually made after you've excluded other causes of cardiomyopathy. What are the other causes of cardiomyopathy? Valvular heart disease, which your echo will tell you if your valves are okay. Um, uh, heart attacks, um, you know, very uncommon in young women of childbearing age, but worth uh, excluding. Uh, infections like uh, myocarditis, that kind of thing can cause heart muscle weakness. Um, but once you've excluded those, uh, and if the person is pregnant, and it's, uh, then you can come to that diagnosis of peripartum cardiomyopathy. Uh, what is the prognosis? This is really important. Well, if you do develop peripartum cardiomyopathy, what is the prognosis? And the answer is that... Uh, you know, generally about 60% of patients uh, make a complete recovery. You know, the baby is born, the pregnancy stage is gone, you start them on medications to strengthen the heart up, and in about six months, the majority of patients start showing some improvement. Um, however, some people don't show an improvement, and in those people, it can be a dangerous condition, and the mortality in those people is around about 10% in two years, okay? Um, the patients who have a worse prognosis in general are, again, patients who are of African ancestry, who have multiple fetuses, who are older than, so 30 to 35 years, and whose ejection fraction at presentation is less than 30%. Remember, the diagnosis is made when the ejection fraction is less than 45%. But if your ejection fraction is less than 30%, that points to a worse prognosis in the long term. Also, people who are very symptomatic, so they're very breathless on modest exertion, they have lots of fluid and swelling, they do worse in the long run compared to people who have a milder form of this peripartum cardiomyopathy. Um, in in that sense, it's worth also just knowing, well, why do patients with um, peripartum cardiomyopathy who have the severest forms, why do they do so badly? What is the mechanism behind why they do badly? Well, the first is that the heart muscle becomes um, irreversibly damaged, so you cannot uh, uh, get it better with... Uh, um, medications and consequently the heart continues to weaken, can't cope with the stresses and eventually gives up. Of course if you have a weak heart it is more prone to developing heart rhythm disturbances and because it is weak and a heart rhythm disturbance by definition is an, is an increased inefficiency of the heart then that combination can be dangerous and can cause sudden death. And thirdly People with a peripartum cardiomyopathy, because the heart isn't pumping as much blood out, some blood can stagnate, form blood clot, and that blood clot can get dislodged and cause strokes. So that's another mechanism by which uh, people can die with this condition. Uh, when there is advanced uh, heart failure, it is very important for the uh, obstetrician to involve the cardiologist and the anesthesiologist and the neonatologist because timing of the delivery of the baby is of paramount importance, trying to work out what is the right time and the right setting to de deliver the baby. In those people who have very advanced heart failure, in those patients who have, you know, very symptomatic, it is perhaps best to pre-plan it by cesarean section. So you, as soon as you think that the baby is strong enough to withstand, you know, to sustain itself, uh, a multidisciplinary team needs to be involved and the baby should be delivered with cesarean section. Um, what else can I tell you about this condition? There is a recurrence, uh, there's a risk of recurrence with subsequent pregnancies, okay? So if you've had peripartum cardiomyopathy once, the chances are higher that you could get it again the second time around. Of course, if the heart muscle has recovered completely, between pregnancies, then the chances of it recurring are less than if the heart muscle hasn't recovered completely. Therefore, we normally would say that if you've got, if you've developed peripartum cardiomyopathy, and if the peripartum cardiomyopathy was really severe, so the ejection fraction was, say, less than 25% when it initially presented, 
then we would generally recommend that you don't get pregnant again because the risks are high. Also, if the heart muscle hasn't gone back to normal and your ejection fraction is less than 50%, then it is generally recommended that you don't get pregnant again because you've already got a weak heart and if you develop the cardiomyopathy again in a subsequent pregnancy, then the heart could potentially become weaker and that could be dangerous. Um, other than that, I think, you know, the majority of people get better. How is it treated? Uh, treatment depends on whether the cardiomyopathy is developed in pregnancy or the cardiomyopathy has developed after delivery, okay? And the important thing with that is that some of the medications we can give are contraindicated in pregnancy, but could be given after delivery, provided the mother doesn't breastfeed. So if uh, a person develops uh, peripartum cardiomyopathy and they have delivered the baby, then the medications which really help are ACE inhibitors. So those are things like ramipril, lisinopril, etc. Beta blockers, metoprolol, carvedilol, bisoprolol, and aldosterone antagonists, spironolactone, uh, spironolactone. Those medications have been shown to strengthen the heart muscle and prolonged life in people with heart muscle weakness develops in pregnancy uh, then some of the medications are contraindicated so ACE inhibitors are contraindicated so in that setting uh, one would normally use beta blockers uh, and then um, once the baby is born then um, you know and as long as the mother is not breastfeeding then you can use the ACE inhibitors etc. Uh, and this is uh, basically, I think this is the, these are the main kind of points uh, um, about peripartum cardiomyopathy. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, the, if this happens, the patient, uh, you know, gets the treatment and then by six months, hopefully the majority of patients get better. And if you can recover complete function, then that is an ideal opportunity. Um, I think after um, the next question, I guess, is how long do you continue the medications for, particularly if the heart muscle recovers? And the majority of people would say that you should continue the medications for at least six months. And if after that the heart muscle remains well, you could gradually tail them off and watch very carefully by means of echocardiography just to make sure that the heart muscle isn't uh, starting to weaken again. Um, and that's about it really with the peripartum cardiomyopathy. I uh, I know this is not a common condition um, and I do think that it's important that this video doesn't scare all those pregnant women out there. I, you know, most pregnancies go completely fine. Many patients who are pregnant will develop some symptoms of breathlessness and some heart flutterings, etc. That doesn't automatically mean you've developed a pregnancy-induced cardiomyopathy. Uh, but in those uh, patients who have extreme symptoms like breathlessness, etc., it's certainly worth having an echocardiogram and making sure that this isn't the case. Um, I hope you found this video useful. If you know anyone who is searching for answers, who may have been diagnosed with peripartum cardiomyopathy, please consider sharing it with them. Other than that, I'm so very grateful for all the kind things you say, and I'm sorry I haven't put any videos up, but I will do soon. Take care. All the best.